So I know when it comes to laptops, everyone has their favorite preferences when it comes to operating systems, but sometimes people have to use the Windows ecosystem, whether that be for work and play. Samsung is getting ambitious this year, and their new Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 seems to be packing a lot of features. With the new 13th gen Intel i7, a premium design, and an S Pen just to name a few, let's check out my complete review from the note taking, the gaming, and the performance. All of that will be addressed here. Hey everyone, I'm Rich. Welcome back to the channel. So the Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 is a lightweight 2-in-1 laptop coming in at around 128 millimeters thin and weighs only 3.66 pounds. And some of you guys on the channel already know that I love lightweight devices, um, whether that be phones, laptops, and whatnot. When I'm ready to head outside, I can easily just slip this inside my backpack. A laptop at this size manages to actually work pretty well. I feel like I'm on the go with this device, just how lightweight it is and just how easily it slips in and out. It has a nice aluminum painted finish on the outside, giving it a very, very premium feel and a 360 degree hinge that allows you to use in laptop mode, tent mode, and tablet mode, which we'll talk about later. I do, however, see that it easily tracks fingerprints, especially on this graphite colorway. Uh, not a huge deal breaker, but that's going to mean that I'll be wiping it down using a microfiber cloth more often. And now you'll see two USB-C ports on the left side, one on the right, a headphone jack, micro SD card slot, and HDMI 2.0 port. Uh, it would be nice to see an HDMI 2.1 port on here which would allow for higher bandwidth capacity which means support for higher video resolutions like 4K 120 frames, 8K 60 and all that good stuff, enhanced audio channels and more but hey what can you do? Now the most notable feature on this laptop is the folding 2-in-1 display and as far as the overall durability of the hinges it's quite strong which after many times of bending this laptop around opening, closing, folding it surely feels like it will hold up for a very long time. The metal hinges will stand a lot of pressure even on tent mode. The touchpad has been expanded on the Galaxy Book 3. It's actually very large. I found that like my left palm will kind of grace over the touchpad sometimes when I'm like typing. I found the pad to be pretty tactical around its lower half, so I think the experience here is very nice. The keyboard combines a primary set with shortcuts and a number pad, which could be great for users that would like to do a lot of, you know, calculations on here. I find a full size pad nice. I see they crammed a lot of keys in here. The keys have a very short travel and I feel like I bounce pretty fast on here. I don't think it's that noisy either. I'm not too sure what they're using under here, but it does feel very rubbery. And I like that too. By far, one of the better keyboards I've used on a laptop in a while. Oh, and this keyboard does have backlit lighting too. Now moving on to the display, um, I've got some things to say about the screen. Most of us would already know that Samsung is just amazing when it comes to making displays. I mean, they make displays for their TVs, their monitors, uh, for iPhones, for their Samsung Galaxy uh, phones and all that. The 120 hertz 16 by 10 AMOLED panel that's on the Galaxy Book 3 is stunningly colorful. The operation is smooth and sharpness is way ahead of a lot of screens out there for laptops. I think they did a terrific job on those sectors. You know, watching content on here is so pleasing to the eye with the deep color space they have on here, the immense rich black and whites. Um, it's really just two things here. It only has a max peak brightness of 400 nits and uh, there's a lot of glare on here. I think it's enough for me to say that working outside in daylight like a coffee shop or something, you might see it and it does maybe get a little bit annoying. You can kind of see the reflections on camera throughout the video, but I would have liked if they did give us a better coating on the screen to reduce that, increase the brightness, because I think that's kind of unusual to see from Samsung. Like I said, it's a very terrific screen. Everything looks super, super rich on here. It's just that, you know, it's just, it's just glare is a lot. I don't know. Just like the Galaxy Book 2, the speakers actually come from the bottom sides of the laptop and from a functional standpoint, I don't think that's like the best move that could have put the speakers up top or maybe hit the back of the monitor or something like that. But hey, it gets loud. I don't think it sounds the best in my opinion. It lacks a lot of bass and in return, if you crank this up to full volume and play music, you can kind of hear like the highs start tinning a little bit. I know they're rocking with some AKG speakers like they're saying in the back of the laptop, but around $2,000, I was expecting something a little bit better I hoped because yeah the sounds kind of hit the surface that you're on and just kind of like bounces up top mm, I don't know maybe they had to do it to like conserve on space or something but all right now let's talk about the engine the meat of this video all right the performance and gaming how well does it handle Let's check it out. So for everyday operations, that includes browsing the web, content consumption, and just simply navigating throughout the laptop, I found this to be extremely fast thanks to the 13th generation i7 1360p processor in here with a total of 12 cores, four of which are the high performance and the rest are saved for efficiency. I ran a simple Geekbench test on here and found that the scores with the laptop plugged in came out to a whopping 2,298 for single core usage, 
and 9,194 for all the cores combined, which makes us very, very close to around the Apple's M2 chip for comparison. So, hey, it's a very, very powerful machine and it's capable here. When we take this over to Modern Warfare 2, it's a very heavy, intense AAA game that I love playing. You already know that these kids don't even stand a chance. I'm just absolutely destroying them. We hit a solid average 30 frames per second with upper, medium to high graphics. And I mean, it's by no means a gaming machine here uh, whatsoever. Those Iris XC graphics on the Intel processor is really doing work but hey it's going to be enough for you to run any games if you're going to be looking at that i think if you can run modern warfare 2 like that you wouldn't have a problem playing something else like indie games or some other trip boy titles so how well does it fare for stuff like editing video now on davinci resolve 18 the timeline seemed to be running just fine with the clips loading fast and speedy Playback managed to work great here with just a few hiccups when I was playing around with these high res 4K clips. Now I was able to render a 20 minute 4K video in 39 minutes, which was all right. I found that MacBooks tend to have better support for video editing softwares and stuff like that. But the Galaxy Book 3 held up very well. And when you take this over to stuff like Photoshop or Lightroom, crushing through those photos was a breeze. I was exporting like 50 to 100 photos at one time and I was able to do it in less than 10 minutes. So I think this processor is here to stay and you're actually be getting a lot of bang for your buck here when it comes to CPU and GPU performance. I also forgot to mention the fan. It seemed to be slightly noisy in my opinion, even when an idle. You can kind of hear it if you're in a quiet room as it revs up and down, and it does sound pretty audible when working with intensive apps. Here's some examples if you want to hear it. And the S Pen that was included in this device is very excellent too. The laptop was meant for it, and I find taking notes on here super enjoyable. It's very light, the pen. Uh, it's almost a little too light that you could mistake this for something cheap, but it's not. Unfortunately, there's no real spot you can place this on. It is magnetic, so you can kind of like, I don't know, put it around down here in the lower half. Um, I did find that you can like kind of put it behind the laptop, but that usually falls out. If you're in school or taking the pen around, I definitely try to keep a mental note of where you put this, because it can be pretty easy to lose this in my opinion. Keep it somewhere safe, keep it somewhere tucked, keep it close. A cool feature that's only on Samsung laptops is the S Pen shortcut menu. If you hold the pen close to your screen and press, it'll bring up a shortcuts menu where you can choose a variety of apps. Smart Select, Pen Up, Screen Write, by far my favorite, because you can actually take a screenshot of the entire screen, of course, and start writing on it. Super useful if you're taking notes for a class or something like that. Maybe you need to mark up something. It saves me a lot of time. I find myself using it a lot. And yeah, taking notes on here is very pleasant too. The huge 16 inch 3K display is very comfortable. It looks, you know, obviously amazing on here, like I said before, minus the glare. The S Pen is accurate and precise. There's minimal drag, as you can see here, and it's incredibly easy once you get the hang of it for a day or two. I like to use Samsung Notes as it's already built into the laptop, and uh, exporting, importing notes seems fast to me. There are, of course, hundreds of writing apps out there, and I usually turn off uh, ignore touch input in the Windows pen and ink settings, as this allows the screen to have less confusion while resting your palm on the screen, a setting which I think should already be turned on by default, because if you let your hand rest on it while you write, sometimes it just starts bugging out. Like it'll close a tab or just, you know, it's not, doesn't track well. Other than that, the screen responds to force very well with the pencil getting bolder the harder you press. My only real concern is that it is a little bit hard to handle, especially if you have the laptop folded down on the surface. The keyboard and all that will kind of lay flat. And I am trying my hardest to be careful when I pick it up and move it around because, you know, it is an expensive laptop and it, it did kind of easily scratch when I kind of moved it around. You kind of have to get your like fingernails and kind of like lift it up easily. And as far as the battery goes, this is nothing too impressive, but it's great to see. Uh, the Book 3 was able to hit up to 11 hours of video playback. That was a combination of, you know, surfing the web and all that. It all depends on the usage as well. So as you can see, I played a few games on here which knocked down the battery life significantly, but it's nothing too major. I found myself getting a solid uh, 7 to 10 hours of battery use here with a balance setting turned on in the power management area. Like I said, it all depends on what you're doing. And using their included Samsung charging brick, I was able to go from 0 to 100% in under 3.5 hours. So respectable performance as you can tell. Now overall, what do I think about the Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360? Uh, in general, I think it's a very premium machine and they got a lot of good features on here with the AMOLED 3K display, their 2-in-1 folding feature, and the S Pen is just simply amazing on here. It's very enjoyable and the experience here feels very premium. The performance is also very strong as well. The only thing I have to say about the Galaxy Book 3 is that, um, 
Around $2,000, I was expecting a little bit more. Like I said, maybe just a brighter screen, better coding, the speakers, come on. Again, these are only my opinions. I think they could have done a little bit more here. But if you can look past those flaws, and by all means, I think this is a great laptop to go for. But now I want to hear your opinion. What do you guys think about the laptop? Are you looking at getting it? Do you have one already? Do you have any of the previous laptops before? Are you someone from a different user? Did you come from, I don't know, MacBooks, HP, Lenovo's, you know, any of that? Let me know down in the comments below. If you made it to any video, um, thank you, by the way, for watching till the end. You know, hit that like and subscribe button for me, please. That's going to help me out a lot. And until next video, I'll see you guys then.